The sailor's brush or the sailor's swab. Today's little project is we're going to make this rather nice decorative looking brush. This one's fairly a fairly soft brush, depending on the type of cordage that you use. So this is a soft cordage. I would probably use this one just for sweeping my keyboard or something like that. Or crumbs from a table, which was one thing that they were used for in the past. And so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how to make this particular one and I'll put measurements at the end of the video and this very simple one here all I've done is I've taken a piece of rope which you can see just at that point there and then here we've tied a simple Matthew Walker knot and then at this point here what I've done is I have combed it out and we've created a nice little brush for it. And obviously, if you get yourself a really coarse rope, where it's got coarse fibers inside, you can then use it for scouring the decks or your pots and pans within the galley. Within the galley, listen to that, very nautical saying. Okay, and so that's what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna show you how to make the sailor's whisk or the um, sailor's I forgot the name of it. How stupid am I? Sailor's Whisk or the Sailor's... I just remembered the name. The Sailor's Swab. <laughs> How useless am I? Anyway, that's what we're going to do today. So please, if you enjoy this video, please do share it so that others can watch it. And that's what it is. The Sailor's Swab or the Sailor's Whisk. Thanks then, and see you on the other side. Let's get knotting. Right. So, as you can see here, I've got a fairly small length of cord, and like I said at the beginning, I will put measurements at the end of the video as to how much cordage I used for this. And so now that I've got my cord, the first, okay, what I've done is, at this end here, I have taped the ends up to stop them unraveling for the moment, because we will unravel them later on. And the next thing I want to do is I basically want to center my cord and what we're going to do is we're going to create a loop at this end here and tie that off. Now, when we are making your loop, we don't want the loop too big because it's, it gets floppier the bigger it is. But we don't want it too small because we still want to allow it to hang over something and also to fit in our hand and have some rigidity to it. So I think probably about that size will be good for my loop here. And so the next thing that we're going to do is, I should have got the piece of string, but I'm going to get myself a piece of string now and tie a constrictor knot around that point. So I'll back in a second when I get my string. Okay, let's just centre that a bit. As you can see here, what I've got is, I've got myself just a short, well, shortish piece of cord. It's a bit of off cut that I've got left over. And then first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tie a constrictor knot to seize these two together at the point where I want my loop to be. So all I'm going to do now is bring the left hand lead over like so. So then we take the right hand lead and pass it over. So they're crossing over at this point here. I then take it around the back. And the other thing is, if you don't know the constrictor knot, I'll put a link in somewhere on here to show you how to tie, just to tie the constrictor knot and that will help you along. So if you don't know this is a constrictor knot, follow the link, and the link will also be in the description below, um, and it's, it's just a very, very useful knot to learn. So as you can see, what I've done is, I have gone round my cordage like so, I then take the right hand lead, pass it over the left hand lead, and keep that crossing over point there. I then go over, like so, and then pass it underneath that one, like so, and then I pass it underneath the next one like so, and if that's too fast, just take a look at my um, description below and it'll show you how to tie the constrictor knot. Okay, so we don't want it too tight to start with because what we want to do now is just adjust it to the point where we feel comfortable with the size of that loop. And I think, to be honest, I'm quite comfortable with it being there. So if I pull up tightly on that now, that will now lock in place and it's not going to come undone. And if you want to, for additional security, you can tie another knot over the top of it like so, just to lock that in place. There we go, just another knot in there and that is now locked in place. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do now is we need to unravel 
these six chords. So I've got three on this side, three on this side, but before I, I'm gonna take this, the masking tape off the complete ones here, and what I'll do is I'll just show you what I'm gonna do on one side, and take the masking tape off that I've got on there just to hold it, or you could have, um, once again, an, another constrictor not holding this all together here. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to just unlay the rope fractionally like so so I've got my three strands there and so you'd have another three strands in that point there and the next thing I'm going to do is just mask these three up separately so that they don't come undone so what I'll do is I'll go ahead and mask those up and then I'll get back to you right so as you can see now what I've done is I've unraveled the rope slightly so we've now got six strands here and all these six strands Let's just show you that. All those six strands there have got masking tape on the end to prevent them from coming unraveled even more. Otherwise you'll end up with a massive mess and it looks horrible. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to do is we're just going to basically uncoil or unravel all our strands until we get down to the bottom where our seizing is there. So where we've put our constrictor knot in, just unravel it like so until we get down the bottom. And what I'll do is I will go on and do the other side because there's no point in you watching me unravel it and then I will get back to you and show you the next step of making our sailor's swab. So there we have it, they are now all unraveled. So I've got six unraveled strands leading up to my constrictor knot then leading up to the handle of my sailor's whisk. Now, in the begin now at this point here now, it's up to you what knot you choose. I've done a video on this previously and I did a different knot, but in this particular case, I want to tie the Matthew Walker knot in this because I think it's a rather decorative and beautiful looking knot and goes well on a sailor's swab or whisk. So the first thing to do to tie our Matthew Walker knot is, what I do is I'm going to First of all, take the left hand lead that I can see uppermost and nearest to me. So this one, this lead here, is the left hand and uppermost one that I can actually see. And what I'm gonna do to tie the Matthew Walker knot is I just get hold of the working end of that and I bring it completely round the front of my work like so. So as you can see, it's going around like that and coming over the top. I then take it, the working end, around the back and pass it up through that loop I have just created there. And we don't want to pull it too tight because we're going to do quite a bit more with that shortly. You'll see what happens shortly. So we need a fair sized loop here. So what we've done is we've gone around, if I can actually get my pointer pointing, we've gone round, over the top, round the back and then it comes up through the loop. Now the next that one we want to do is we want to go to the uppermost and just to the right hand side of that. So if I now take this one here and I do exactly the same as the one before. I create a loop like so. I then follow it round and I go underneath the previous one and then bring it up through the back, through both the loops this time. You can see now why we need a bit of a gap, and there we go. That is my second one done. I then go to the next one along, which is this is the uppermost and to the right of that, and I take this one and do exactly the same again. I form a loop on the left-hand side. I then go round underneath and then bring it up through the middle, through all three this time, and there we go, I've got my third one done. And you can see here, that was the first one we did, second one, third one. And we've got three loops here as well. I now go round a bit further, and I just turn it slightly, and I look for the next uppermost one to the last one I did, which happens to be this one here. And so once again, what I do is I form a loop on the left hand side like so. I go round, underneath, keep it underneath the last, the previous three, 
and then up through the hole, through everything, to the beginning again. And there we go, there's our next one has passed through. And it's getting a bit tighter as we go along. You'll see it gets tighter going through the first hole, but we should have enough gap there to come along. Now, now go round a little bit further, and the next one that I come to, let's see, there's two here very close together. So yeah, this is this one here is my uppermost and to the right. So I take that one now and form a loop over the top, form a loop over the top, bring it round the back, pass it up through everything. So all the previous loops, all four previous loops, or five, five previous loops, and bring it on through. And you can see there, we've still got it nice and neat there. We keep try and keep it as neat as possible on that side. And we can then eventually tighten up on those a little bit. And then finally, we've got our very last loop one here. This is our very last one. So once again, I form a loop over the top on the left-hand side, bring it around the back, and then pass it up through the middle of the previous five loops, or six loops now, because we just created one. So bring it up through that loop there, and then pull it up tightish. Okay, so now, this is the next thing that we would need to do. We need to now start pulling up on the loops. So just pull up gently on the loops, and feed the work through. So just gently pull up, and you start to close that big loop that we had initially. Just gently pull them up, and just pull them through and gradually your knot will start to fall into place. There we go. And just keep pulling them up and gently, gently pull them up, pull the excess through, and that's it. And then pull them up like so. And so you can see here, it looks a bit of a mess, but gradually, as we pull up on these, so I'm gonna tease these up a bit more. So just gently pull them through pull them through to tighten it up and my rope's not very slippy so it's slightly more difficult than if you're using a synthetic rope but you can see here now gradually as I'm pulling these up there we go just keep pulling take the pull, take the tension on them and just don't, don't over pull one and try and work it through and you can gradually see here we're starting to get a bit of a spiral forming and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around, just gently pull up on each one. Whoop, missed one out. Don't want to miss one out. And gently pull them up until we get a nice spiral starting to appear. And you can see here now we're getting that spiral effect. And what we can do is just gently tease the cords over like so. Just tease them round so that eventually we get that spiral shape going all the way around. And you can see here now, that as I pull up on this, well, and my seizing's gone into play as well, but never mind, we can get that out later. And just keep pulling up. And that's all I'm gonna do now is, and you can see here now, as I'm doing it, just gently pull it up, pull it up. Twist the rope as well, because what you want to do is just keep that shape of the actual rope itself. Keep Try and keep the lay of the rope nice and then eventually as I pull up on this the Matthew Walker knot will start to appear and I can just gently tease it into position like so there we go and it's soft at the moment it's fairly soft to handle and what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep pulling up and teasing up on this until it is nice and tight and you can see here now it's starting to look like a really decent knot. A little bit loose on this end there, but all I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go around and get my spike in there, and pull it up tight, and then pull it up tight. And just keep pulling up tight until we get everything nice and tight. And that's all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go around now and just tighten up and keep tightening and tightening until we get a really nice, because when you look at this, it's almost in shape, but look, we can get our fingers in there. It's not as solid as we would like it to be. And so therefore, I'm just gonna keep on pulling up. So let, 
I'll be back with you in a minute after I've pulled it all up a little bit more. So as you can see, what I've done is now, I've pulled it up even tighter and basically all I've done is go round. But because I'm leaning forward like this, I can't pull it up any tighter. But bring it up against your chest or something like that. In fact, sometimes I go outside and I've got a special hook outside that I hang this from and I just pull up until I end up with a really nice, starting to get a bit of sound to it. Nice little knot at that point there. And you can see that nice spiral shape is starting to appear. And it's also at this point now, I would consider removing my seizing that I've got here. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna dig down in there, pull out my seizing, but I'm then gonna go around and pull up again because I'm sure I can get it even tighter than I've got it now. And so that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm gonna take my seizing out and I'm gonna go away and just really pull up on this so it's nice and tight. But you can see here now, I've got a handle and I've got something to grip hold of and eventually this will then be frayed and it will turn into a sailor's whisk. Now, a good rope to make it, depends, well, it depends on what you want it for. This rope is a little bit on the soft side, but it will do as for sweeping crumbs off a table, something like that. But if you've got some really old rough rope, you can use it for scouring pans, things like that. So anyway, I'm gonna go off and just dress this up a bit more and then I'll come back to you and show you the next bit. Right, so what I've done now is I've taken my seizing out from the middle there and where I've taken my seizing out now, I've noticed that it's just slackened off a little bit. So all I'm going to do now is this is, this is the, the part that's most crucial out of all of it. Once you've tied it, you want to get it up nice and tight. And you can see as I pull this, you can see that it's slightly misshaping here. And so what I want to do is, I'll, and you see here, look, I can get my fingers in between the gaps there like so. So what I want to do is just make sure it's pulled up even tighter and then I've succeeded in putting my Matthew Walker knot into our sailor's whisk here. So I'm just gonna go continue round, pulling up on that, swinging from it from anything I can until eventually I've got a really nice, tight, firm knot at that point there. Right, so there we have it. I've got my Matthew Walker knot tied in there. That is quite nice and tight on there. And the next thing that we want to do is, now you've got a couple of choices here. You can either, I think what I will do is, I'm gonna cut these to the length that I want my actual moppy bit to be. So I've got this tied now. Now the thing is, we could have used a shorter length of rope, but the problem with using a shorter length of rope is that when you're tightening up, what you want to do is you want to be able to just basically lock the strands around your hand like so and pull it up as tight as you can so you end up with a nice Matthew Walker knot at that point here that is nice and hard and isn't going to go anywhere. So right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these to the approximate length that I want them to be. So I think, to be honest, I'm going to cut them about in half. Yeah, cut them in half, and then once I have cut them in half, so I might as well, I don't know if you want to see this, but what I'll do is I will now start the process of just cutting the cords into about half so that we can then end up with the sort of length of swab that we want. So just bring that into view. There's no point in cutting out of view. And all I'm gonna do now is just cut the excess off and so I think that's gonna be nice length for my swab. And I'm just gonna go round and do that to all my strands here now. So anyway, I'll do that and I'll come back to you on the other right, side. So as you can see, what I've done is, let's get that out of the way. I have now cut my strands off here and I've left these ones loose. And the idea now is, this is now where you get to watch a lot of television or just sit and chat to somebody. Because the next thing we're gonna do is tease all the strands apart. And so as you can see, the first bit is easy. Just, just teasing those apart is fairly easy. So those individual strands have now been teased apart. But the next thing you want to do is tease the strands within the strands apart. So you get the individual threads. See there, as I'm peeling that now, don't know if you can see that, as I'm peeling that now, 
there's more and more strands within. And the whole idea is we end up with a massive bush of all our strands teased apart so we have a nice brush on the end of our sailor swab here. So that's the next thing I'm gonna do. Sit in front of the TV, watch something, and I will then produce my stranded swabs like so. So anyway, I will get on and do that and I'll see you again on the, oh, doesn't it look scruffy? Anyway, I will see you again once I've teased all the strands apart. So as you can see, I have now teased it apart and we've got fairly, still fairly chunky strands in there. But the next thing I'm gonna do, which takes even longer, is take each one of the individual strands here and just separate them out into their, almost their own fibers. So just gently tease them apart so that they become their own fibers. And then once we've done that, or once I've done that anyway, whether you want to go ahead and do that, I don't know. I mean, the thing is, if you want a fairly coarse um, scrubbing brush, you can leave it like that and just scrub away using that. Or if you want a fairly fine brush, you see all the fibers are starting to now come out of this, but eventually what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate the fibers and I'm going to brush them out. Now the thing I've got, um, which all of you won't have, is I've got a dog and the dog has got one of those very fine steel comb brushes. And what I'm going to do is once I've separate the fibers, I will then put this into hot water because as you can see here now, it's still got the shape of the rope in it. But when I put it into hot water, it's going to lose that shape and eventually it's just going to hang nice and straight down like so. And then we end up with a nice crumb sweeper, or if we want, leave it fairly coarse as a form of scrubbing brush for your pots and pans. Um, but that's what I'm going to do next to actually make this into a fairly fine um, looking uh, sailor's whisk. So anyway, I will get on and do that. And you can see I've got a lot of TV time in front of me. So I'm going to unpick those in front of the TV and then I'll come back to you again in a little bit. Right, so what I've done now is I have put it under hot water now and you can see now that it's straightening out a lot. I might have to do it a couple of times under hot water and comb it out as well so it stays nice and straight. And what I'm gonna do is let it dry for a bit and then start combing it again. But you can gradually see, it does take time. I mean, this thing does take time, but you then end up with, let me just show you down here, you end up with a nice looking sailor's whisk here. So all I'm gonna do now is I've wet it with hot water and I'm gonna let it dry so that it dries straight and then I'm gonna comb it out again with the dog's brush. I'll show you what the brush is in a minute. I haven't got it in here at the moment. And um, yeah, so I'll get back to you in a little bit and you can then see that. So here we are a little bit later. As you can see, I've brushed it out some more and it's looking a little bit scraggly at the end, but those will be trimmed off. It, I have wet it as well with hot water to straighten it out. So we've got the where the rope was laid, we've taken those the wrinkles out of it. And what I've done here at the moment is I've just wrapped an elastic band around it just to keep it nice and steady. And you can see here now that we've got a nice Matthew Walker knot pattern there. And oh, just whilst we're here. Now th this is the brush that I've been using <laughs> and that's what I've pulled out. That's not the dog. My dog is brown, like the, um, the background cloth here. That's what I've pulled out of it so far. Don't go overzealous with it because you will, will pull fibers out, but just gently with the brush, just start combing it out and you might even have to tease it some more in front of the telly, but you can see here how now it's starting to get a nice brush shape on the end there. That's still wet, so that's got to dry some more. And once it's dry, I'm gonna brush it again, and then we should have ourselves a really nice sailor's whisk for scrubbing pots or sweeping crumbs from a table. Okay, so that's about all that's left to do on that. So I'll show you that when it's dry again shortly. And so there we have it, the sailor's swab or the sailor's whisk. I've brushed it out a bit more and you can see <laughs> another pile of hairs in, in my dog's brush there. 
Um, and then the next thing I would do is I'm just going to gently trim off those loose ends there at that point there. And then I've got myself a nice soft brush here. And don't forget, once again, depending on the type of rope you use, the coarser the harder it is, you can use it for scouring pots and pans, things like that. I think in this particular case, I'll just use this one for dusting my keyboard or something like that. And so yeah, that is it. That is how to make a very, very simple sailor's um, swab or sailor's whisk. And so once again, if you enjoyed it, if you hated it, but please do leave me a comment and tell me why and be much appreciated if you share this video as well so that others can actually watch it as well. So once again, thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye bye.